Welcome to Emerging Leaders, where we feature young leaders of today who are driving change for a better tomorrow. My name is Nathan Varghese, and I'm the video editor for this series. Today, we'll be talking to Carlos Arturo Araujo Aguillan, a young leader from El Salvador, who's also the founder of a nonprofit organization called Cubre Cume Crece. In this discussion, Carlos shares his inspiring work supporting communities during the COVID-19 pandemic, and how his leadership is driven by a strong sense of social commitment. Welcome to the show, Carlos. Such a pleasure to to meet you. Um, how about you start us off and tell us about the nonprofit organization that you started called? Uh, um, I'm sure I'm going to butcher this, but uh, Cum Cubre e Crece. Tell me about that. Yeah. Well, I founded Cubre Cum e Crece when I was 16. Um, I always wanted to do a social project. I didn't know what specifically. I didn't know what to do. But um, as I said, I started it when I was 16 in 2019, uh, December. Um, there was this space that I used to go with my family, which is a public dormitory. So they took me there to, um, feed the elderly, have conversations with them, uh, do all this. So when I was 16, I remember that I did that all the time when I was younger. So I knew I wanted to help that specific place. Um, and with a bunch of my friends, um, we took, um, 950 items, uh, between, um, food, uh, blankets, uh, Christmas cards, and all that. And we just went to spend time with them, have fun. Um, again, it was like a Christmas party. And, well, after that, a few months after COVID hit, so it was the moment uh, where I felt the it's step-up time call. So I think that's where we really started with my friends. Like step up time for real during the pandemic, I think that was really the step up time for a lot of nonprofits, a lot of leadership organizations. Uh, tell me more, more a bit more how you stepped up during the pandemic. Well, with my friends, we were listening about all this news that was extremely heavy, specifically in El Salvador, because um, the thing was that we got quarantined before COVID entered the country. So when COVID entered, we were already out. So it was a whole uh, management issue. So many people were suffering and the health system basically collapsed really quick. So I was hearing all these stories and also a tropical storm hit uh, exactly while COVID was in the biggest moment, uh, in the worst moment. So I heard about this community that lost everything. I saw uh, pictures of many homes that had nothing left. So. I remember that, well, I did a partnership with my first project with the one in 2019 that I mentioned. I did a partnership with uh, uh, MRO Parts. Uh, it's a like a aviation company. So I remember like, okay, I got help this time, but I want to do it with my friends by ourselves, like, like this time. So um, I told them, let's collect uh, clothing and let's send it. So... We gathered, I think, um, more than 220 items and we sent it through to the community. And I think it reached that community specifically that wasn't like the most affected by the storm and also many others around it. So um, from then on, it was just doing uh, projects every three months and every project is a big project for us. So, so that's how we kind of got in track to do this. It sounds like a huge initiative it sounds like it took a lot of effort a lot of investment from yourself and and your team members i mean there must have been like the high points you know the moments where you remember as the most rewarding and the probably the most lowest points where you also remember the challenges uh, could you tell me a story too where you remember the most rewarding uh, experiences you've had during this initiative as well as you know what were the most biggest challenges you had to overcome i am not gonna lie for me I think since the first moment I did it, everything was rewarding. Um, I felt that what happened to me was from a movie. Um, well, because I didn't mention this, but one of the things that also made me want to step up and to, to do this for real was that uh, that first project that I did in December with my friends, um, I had this conversation with an elder that was in that public dorm and we were talking about footballs, like irrelevant stuff. And then out of nowhere, the, this person started asking me, like, who did this? Like, who brought these people? Who who made this, like, party for us? And I was like, no, like, it was my friends. Uh, it, it was all of us, like, really, like, don't even think about it. And he was like, no, 
I want to know who did it, like who brought all these people. And he continued asking me, and like by the fifth time he asked me, I was okay. Uh, I, I told my friends, let's come and let's do this. But it was just all of us. And and he told me, I think the phrase that I've mentioned so many times in so many different places, but is the one that changed like the course of my life, which is, um, you are the generation that is coming to fix the problems left by mine. And that is just one quote that resonated with me. And since then, um, and also with that, with what I did with my family, I just fell in love with this world. And every moment for me was rewarding. Like that phrase that work is not work when you love it. It like really made sense to me until I got to do all of this. I just fell in love with it. And it's just the love of my life. Like it, there's nothing like it. I'm so fascinated that that particular moment was your defining moment. Tell me a little bit more, like, what was about, what was it about that quote, what that gentleman said that changed it for you? What what happened in your brain during that moment that something just clicked? It was, funny enough, that click didn't happen specifically in that moment. It happened along the way because it made a lot of sense to me. And I was like, well, he said, an amazing phrase, a phrase that definitely needs to be published somewhere. And um, later when people ask me and ask my friends and ask everything, like, why did you do this? You just kind of remember all the reasons because there's never a perfect reason why you did what you do, you know? So I think that was one of the reasons, one of the things that I just remembered every time I got asked this question, like, because we are the generation that is coming to fix the problems that were left by others. So I think it was just one. Also, my family, I think, was a big part of me discovering this and me loving this and making it my world. I think they helped me a lot. And yeah, I think those were the reasons mostly that. And, and you know. The fact that you're able to, you know, support your communities during such a crisis, um, you probably had some interactions with members on the ground. Could you tell me a little bit more of those interactions? What did you learn about your community members that you were trying to support during the pandemic? Um, what were their What were their stories? Uh, was there any particular story that resonated with you? Mm, that that is a, a, like very interesting question because I really never got in depth of their problems with people because I really f find very conflicting doing that because like with this help, we wanted to give them a little moment where they just needed to forget about the problems that they were facing. Like, I think um, many of the conversation that I had it was just many like superficial things, many just having fun, doing a little joke here, a little joke there because for me, it's that little, like, they don't have to be thinking about what they are facing and all the problems that they have on top, at least for a moment. And I think that's extremely rewarding. I feel that that little second of peace just can mean the whole world. And also being friends, you know, I, I don't think um, many people, like, find enjoyable just talking to a stranger about everything that's going on in their lives. Maybe it's just, like, small talk. Like, I can joke with this new guy that I met, and he's now my friend. So that's mostly the interactions that I found. Like, um, a year after my, my project founded, we went to, to an orphanage to give um, Christmas gifts to, to all these children. Just like, we're not going to talk about deep stuff. We're not going to talk about how bad or how good the situation is. It's just, hi, I'm a human being like you, exactly the same as you. I just want to get to know you and have fun like have a good time i love that i love the uh, you know giving people an opportunity just to reset and you're absolutely right we're at the end of the day we're, we're just humans and you know trying to get by and you know small talk or even deep talks at, at the end of the day we're just trying just to be the best humans that we can be and and carlos you know you're you, you've been involved quite a bit you've also been involved at the un level the united nations level can you talk to us about that yeah well i i got extremely lucky because um with my social project um as i said like we we were very we are very active with um the donations every 3 months um also my my social project has 
specifically, this is my segue to the UN. Um, we created these English classes that are uh, certified for underserved communities. So basically, um, 80 kids, or I think more than 80 kids now, um, go to the school I studied in. Uh, I made an academic partnership with them. So they're right there, and many young leaders who are also part of my project uh, teach them English and certify them with my school. So um, through that project um, growing and being a little more known, um, the Anti-Drug Commission of El Salvador um, gave this opportunity of going to trials and maybe be selected uh, to be sent as a proposal for um, the 2022 uh, Youth Forum from UNODC, which is the U anti-drug UN. So I got selected uh, by by the commission, and later I got selected by the UN to be part of, of the forum. And well, during the forum, I also got very, very, very lucky that I got selected within the forum. <laughs> so um, the thing was that the people who were selected, which were um, two people from the forum, got to give the uh, the youth speech to the actual UN assembly. I study in Vienna. So so I've been keeping a, a close relationship with um, UNODC and they have given me many, many opportunities. They are extremely special with me. They are amazing. So I got to also give a youth speech in uh, Vienna's chancellery. Very cool. Carl, like, this is like two types of leadership. One that is very much on the ground and you know you're interacting with members of community and this is the other one is at the UN where you're dealing with state members different countries what are the differences and and the unique aspects of either leadership opportunities that you've engaged with mm, i wouldn't say that like that i felt any different because like for me it was the same co fraction it was like step up time i think what i had present very much in the UN aspect was I want my country to be seen and I want my country to be heard and I want people to think how cool are the people from my country. So that was like one of the main things and also with my project. So, I mean, in different verticals, maybe, um, but I just felt exactly the same. It was just um, maybe in the youth forum, the difference was that it was a lot of like um, education on um, for example, substance use prevention uh, and all of that, which is a little more academic than field work with my project. But it was just, I don't know. I felt it was like the same thing with the same sentiment, with the same passion. Um, but yeah, I would say maybe a little more uh, academic and and yeah, I think that would say that that's like biggest difference. In both cases, you're, you're stepping up and I really, I'm noticing that, you know, the tone of, of your response is that you are wanting to do this because you really want to make a difference and you're passionate about it. And that passion, you know, kind of really relates to this term that you described in the past of social commitment. Yeah. Carlos, tell me what does, what does social commitment mean and how does one get into social commitment? Well, I know it's going to sound very, very abstract, but for me, social commitment is everything literally everything um maybe after this after this talk maybe you you go in a train a bus uh you know get into public transport you'll be sitting next to someone thinking about that someone next to you social commitment it is not feeling that the rest of the people are strangers but that they are actually your brothers and sisters that they at some point will need your help and that you're willing to give it no matter what Social commitment is everything. It's just, I I feel again, like it sounds extremely abstract, but it's finding love on people because your, the place where you are is your home. Your country is your home. You cannot be a stranger to people that live in your home. The, the point about, you know, social commitment being everything, I think that resonates with me quite a bit. And to even dive deeper, what does it mean to have a positive social commitment where you are generating a positive impact on your community? It depends on two aspects, which is the intention and the execution. 
you always to have a positive impact in your community you always need to have a good intention no matter what every decision that you take even personal ones which i think this is um it can sound very very radical but it is actually true when you are thinking about people and thinking about making a change you cannot think your personal decisions as only yours every decision that you take affects everyone and everything around you so always having a good intention uh, always have a good intention to take decisions and to do what you want to do so the good intention is one of the most important things and also the execution the good intention should not stay only in a good intention it should also be executed in any level you want social commitment for me is from explaining to someone something that they may not understand to making this big social project with thousands and millions of donations like social commitment is on every level and is on every vertical so i feel that that is the most important thing not leaving the good intention aside because they are special but to take them to a level of execution that can help others we're so lucky to have you carlos to have someone that understands social commitment appreciates it and is energized to make a difference so before we end this conversation um if there's one piece of advice that you think every young leader should know what would that advice be i would say that no matter what you'd love to do no matter what you want to do it always needs to have that good intention it always needs to take into account you but most importantly who's around you and who is it going to reach because really every decision everything counts and doing the best not only for yourself but for everyone around you in anything really makes the biggest change in the world like i think i've said it also before but like dreaming as a kid is what actually helps you achieve the transcendental because when you think about your goal and when you think about what you want to do when you think about an extent reach that means that you're going doing something good don't limit yourself to something small don't limit yourself to a set of things just find love in what you do and really love people while you do it i think that's that's my message and that's my advice find that because that is the most important thing and it's going to stuck with like stick with you for the rest of your life like that's for sure it's very profound carlos not limiting what you do love what you do and love the people that you do it for thank you carlos for sharing this with me and hope to see you again soon thank you so much i am really honored and the best wishes and again thank you so much